Hey guys, this is Austin, and this is a Razer computer. Banana for scale. I can't do this joke right, but banana for scale. This is the Razer Tomahawk, and with only 10 liters of capacity, no joke, when I walked in here, I straight up thought that this is going to be an eGPU, but it's a computer with uh, computer things and GPU things and a power supply, all in one tiny package for your enjoyment. Where's that banana? I'm just gonna just move on from this. This is not going to... Josh, no. Josh, why are you doing this to me, Josh? Please, no. <laughs> no one needs my... my, my. Also, one banana now, this is a very different kind of computer than you're probably used to. So because it sits in a card-like form factor, you essentially plug it into a PCI slot on a daughter board just like this. You plug in your graphics card here, and there are also M2 slots underneath. So depending on how you want to set it up, you can take advantage of SSD storage not only inside the compute element, but you also could add additional storage inside this daughter board. A lot of this is made possible by this, the Intel NUC compute element. Now, while it might look like a graphics card, what you've got here is essentially a full laptop top motherboard built into a card with a PCI slot. So you look around back, you'll see pretty much all of the ports you would expect. So we've got a couple of ethernet ports, four USB 3.0, two Thunderbolt, as well as an auxiliary audio jack. What's really cool about this is that inside, we have a full ninth generation core processor. Now, mind you, it is an H series. So it's essentially what you would find in say like a Razer Blade, like a gaming laptop, but it goes all the way up to an eight core core i9 in something which can go into a very, very small form factor. So because I have a microphone in my hand and I'm lazy, would you like to build the computer right now? Definitely. I will show you guys how it's done. Okay. So the first step is to install the graphics card. So that will go right into the PCI slot. And then you have this power supply specifically has a very short cable. So it pretty much all just plugs right in. Then we drop the NUC in, which just slides right into place. And with that, plug in the graphics card, plug in the NUC. And then, no, no, no pressure, but that's, there you go. I'm, I'm very proud of you. And then just slide it right in, close the handle, and look at that, you just built a computer. How do you feel? There, I feel proud of myself. Have you done this more or less than 10 times today? Did it probably 50 times. Now, as of right now, the plan for Razer is to sell this as not only a completed computer, but also just as the chassis itself, which will be known as the Tomahawk N1. Now, I don't have pricing on it. However, the release date should hopefully be in the first half of this year. Now, the fun isn't just kept to the desktops, as Razer has also updated their laptop line. So first of all, the 13-inch The Blade Stealth is seeing an update, which is, um, well, I can't really tell you much because all I know is that it will be getting a faster display, a higher refresh rate display of some variety. So that's gonna be fun at some point. But probably the more exciting thing is that the Blade 15 as well as the Blade 17 will be getting a 300 hertz display. Yes, my friends, not 60, not 144, not 240, 300 frames per second. Now, do you need 300 frames per second? Of course you do. You're not a true gamer if you're running at 240 frames per second. If you're running at 200 and 80 frames per second. No, you need 300 hertz. Now, these won't be shipping until roughly the first half of the year. However, they should be taking advantage of the 10th generation Intel processors, which word on the street says might be up to like five gigahertz. So, you know, it's probably gonna be helpful when you're trying to run your game at 300 frames per second. <laughs> On the mobile side of things, we have the Razer Kishi. Now this is a controller which is meant to clip on to a wide variety of phones. So they actually do have the Jungle Cat right here, which is sort of similar to what you could get on the Switch. However, it only works with a few different phones. However, with the Kishi, it should work for most phones with a USB-C port on the Android side, and they are also working on a version for iPhone. The idea here is that on the back, you can kind of stretch it out to kind of get the exact size of your phone, but this should be solid controls for a wide variety of devices. There's also this, the Sealy a 5G router. Now this is a router which can take advantage of not only of course your standard internet connection, but importantly it can also take advantage of 5G, whether it's millimeter wave or sub six. Now, you can easily imagine this replacing your standard Wi-Fi at your house. And the cool part about it is especially when you consider there's a lot of cloud gaming stuff coming up, 5G really is meant for that super high bandwidth, high, low latency, low, high latency, <laughs> yes. Don't, doesn't everyone like high latency gaming? The authority on tech. The theory. <laughs> hey, man, you got to run your Google Stadia somehow. Am I right? Is this why you're bad at every game you play? It's because I'm bad at life, Ken. I'm bad at talking. I'm obviously bad at, at finding friends to hang out with. Yeah, you, you have to put them on payroll. <laughs> Good night.
Thank you very much for watching. It's a window. <laughs> yes, going? yes, Ken, it is a window. It's that time of night. So that is a look at what Razer has at CES. Definitely be sure to subscribe to the channel for more CES coverage. You can also check out some of our other CES videos here. Now, if you excuse me, I'm going to go find friends who are real friends because Ken Bolito, he's just not cutting it anymore. Look, that just was an uncomfortable silence because it's a lot of truth in that statement. You have a friend that's just holding a life for you.